Harassment and human rights issues are on Stephen Hammond's radar. He's a keynote speaker, author, educator, and original part of the Studio 4 work gang. Mm -hmm. He has rescued blue and white collar organizations from harassment charges and human rights disasters. In his work, he encourages people to change with the times. Some listen, some don't. It is my pleasure to welcome Stephen Hammond back to Studio 4 to tell us more of all your accomplishments. I mean, the Studio 4 work gang, surely, is it, right up there. It, it's, it's right at the top. It's right at the top. <laughs> I <Yes>. was thinking. <laughs> now, uh, it was the Dalai Lama, I think, who said, I believe in justice and truth without which there would be no basis for human hope. I, I believe in those same things. Me too. <laughs> well, but it's an example of we say we believe in justice, we believe in truth, we believe in... Uh, defending human rights yeah. and yet often it's just rhetoric well it's rhetoric it's rhetoric in the sense that fanny we're struggling like we're, we're mm. struggling because we want a more just society we want to um, we want the right thing to be done we want equality and yet when it comes down to our choices um, many times we we pull back to how does this affect me or will my child get the same opportunity for a job if in fact we do open up the pool to everyone mm -hmm. and we do make everything equal? Or how will this affect the fact that, gee, if you're telling me that I shouldn't buy products that are made in oppressive countries, then gosh, that means I have to pay more and therefore mm -hmm. I won't have my standard of living. So it's, we're struggling with human rights. We want to do the right stuff. Many times we do, but on the other hand, we're just not sure what to do. Okay, and the basic difference between a human right and a civil right. Well, actually, in, in many in many circumstances, they're the same thing. Um, okay. I mean, they're not entirely, but for the most part, mm -hmm. people tend to look at um, human rights and civil rights as sort of similarities. The basis for what many people have, the beginnings of human rights, was from the 1948 Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And and that, le that spelled out all kinds of principles that back then Canada had a lot of trouble with. We were one of the few countries um, with the likes of Saudi Arabia and, um, and some other countries that don't have good human rights records, mm -hmm. we abstained in the first round of voting at the United Nations on those, and then eventually we, and eventually we ended up voting for it. But, but I would suggest that today, under the climate that we've got today, um, that the vast majority of the items that are in the Universal Declaration would not get to paper. They would, really? They, well, they wouldn't because it seems like communist mm -hmm. stuff. The okay. whole notion of someone actually having right to water or having right to mm -hmm. housing or, you know, all that stuff now would be looked at in the lens of, well, wait a second, is this going to affect business in some way? Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I'm a business person. I appreciate you got to make a profit. But it's just that those principles seem to go too far. And, and, and how many times do people actually adhere to those principles? Right. Even and we all way? ask our leaders, whoever they may be, when they go to a country where the human rights are being violated, uh, blatantly violated. If you go to Syria, you go to China, and you see examples, you go to, you know, talk with the Dalai Lama, he'll tell you things aren't exactly perfect. And yet we see leaders who don't just, they say they bring it up. Yeah. Well, or well, they mention it somehow. Well, yeah. I, saw, I saw a political cartoon years ago. I think it was after the APEC summit w that we had here mm -hmm. in Vancouver. And it was something about, oh, you know, we'll bring them along. And, and uh, they said, you know, with pepper sprays, like, that's not good enough. You've got to actually gun them all down in Tiananmen Square. And, and for me, I don't worry about what my, what my um, Canadian national or even provincial leaders do. I don't care what they do. When it comes time for me to buy, for example, a computer for my business, right. I actually say, you know, this is what I need, this is what I want at the store, and then I say, okay, we've got it down to these models, now which ones are made in China? And, um, and they say these ones, I say, okay, let's eliminate those, and now let's look at what we've got. And I don't want to punish Chinese people, what I want to do is I want to encourage the Chinese government to have normal rules and regulations and laws and actually care about people mm -hmm. and, and not have sure. slaves, for example. They, it's not just bad labor standards, they also have slave labor that make cheap goods for mm -hmm. us that was revealed many, many years sure. ago. So we can make personal decisions on the things that we're going to do, and that can have an impact. Well, as you know, sometimes people say, we just didn't know, and sometimes we just didn't know asbestos for instance, uh, <laughs> the men who, uh, you know, work. Oh, back then we didn't know, back but then certainly we, didn't we know. know. We know now, yes. but even then, uh, so now people have cancer because of asbestos and workers who worked hard, 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 yes. and uh, they're trying to get compensation and they're being refused compensation because we didn't. It's complex. Well, and, and what's interesting is Is that it's a not human that, right? I guess it is to work in a healthy of, workplace. Of course, it would make sense. Of course, it's completely a human right. And, and the thing is that if we didn't know then, we know now. And so there's no excuse. And, and you know, when we think about other places, like I always think about, okay, what do we do in our workplaces? What do we do in our homes? What do we do? 
when we vote. You know, those, those are, we can make decisions on a daily basis about how we're going to support human rights. And so it's a huge blot on our country that we are still exporting asbestos when we know how it's being used. To use the ridiculous line to say, oh well, we put instructions on the side and they'll pay attention to it, when we've got film of seeing people with these tiny little masks, or no masks at all mm -hmm. that are breathing this in, you know these people are gonna die in a few years. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we are actually allowing deaths because of what we're doing. So, the, you know, Canada is not pure in this, Canada's not perfect, not just on that issue, but on a lot of other issues. Sure, no you know, Aboriginal people, you know, a Aboriginal mm -hmm. people, there's people who boycott us because of the fact that we're doing such a horrendous job on, you know, on, on the mm -hmm. Aboriginal treaty front. negotiation and sure. treaty uh, issues, uh, and yet we saw the. Uh, uh, and I haven't read the case, so I shouldn't even be talking about it. But I'll mention it: uh, the bus driver who was uh, hit by. Uh, Del Louis is the fellow's name, yes. uh, who is the, the Aboriginal young fellow, and uh, I think it's Charles Dixon is the bus driver. Right. And you see, this is this is difficult for us. I wrote about this actually. I wrote okay. about this in my newsletter. If people want to go to stephenhammond.ca mm -hmm. um, and, and get into the newsletter, I wrote about this because we struggle with it. And I talked about when I was a kid in high school, we went to Headingley Penitentiary outside of Winnipeg for a debating tournament. I was on the debating team. And we went there for a debating tournament with the inmates and other schools. And for me, that was a stark reality of when I got to see how many brown faces were in mm -hmm. that prison because they mm -hmm. would all come and sit on the bleachers mm -hmm. in, the, in the gym when we were debating and 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 it, for a, a white kid brought up in Winnipeg this was this smacked me in the face and so that's why the Supreme Court of Canada as recently as just March 23rd just a month and a half ago the Supreme Court of Canada said when you are uh, handing out sentences you've got to consider um, Aboriginal heritage because of colonialism they talked about, because of mm -hmm. the residential, residential schools, all these. Schools. And by the way, mm -hmm. our politicians put it into the criminal code. Like they, they gave them a section, uh, section 718, um, um, whatever is a subsection of the criminal code. So mm -hmm. the parliamentarians gave that to the courts to say that when you are considering sentencing, you, you must look for alternatives, especially when you're considering Okay, and I people. understand that. That's a culture, but then there's a, there are white kids and black kids who have been raised in horrendous circumstance of course, of course. and abused and of all of that. So when you're sentencing them, they do consider it. Yeah. In, in well, a proper yeah. court. Yeah, and, and but it's tough. If you're Charles Dixon or you're someone who now is going around with screws, literally screws mm -hmm. and plates in your face, I would not be happy over the fact that this young Aboriginal kid did not get a prison sentence. As a matter of fact, I'd be really, really mad. So, uh, you know, so it's it's difficult for us to be looking at the bigger picture when, in fact, someone has sucker punched not just the first time, but this is more than once. Mm -hmm. He's done this to a bus driver, and say the person gets off without a prison sentence. So, what I encourage people to do is say, if we want less of those of those weird things that are happening, then what we have got to do is we have got to be willing to support and allow our tax dollars to be paid to repair what has gone on with the Aboriginal mm -hmm. culture. And you know what, that can actually or come... prevent it. Well, of course, prevent it. And, and so what we can do is we can actually, in the workplaces, we can make extra effort to make sure that we go mm -hmm. out and hire and try to train Aboriginal people. Um, mm -hmm. Because, you know, the young people have high unemployment. And so, that, like, there's things that we can do on a day-to-day -day basis or befriend Aboriginal people sure. or help them out. Um, and some of that's happening. I mean, my Native friends uh, are, some of them have... Many of them have high jobs and they're judges and they're, sure. <laughs> you know, yeah. lieutenant governors, things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so if you <laughs> are a child too. and you, you, you see somebody in your culture yeah. who has succeeded, yeah. Oh, that, that's, so education, yeah. start uh, there. Yeah. Of course, it, it, it's vital. You know what's interesting is um, when I find out exactly how much suicide is going on among, uh, uh, amongst Aboriginal youth, like we hear the stats, but my partner was going up to... Um, I'm forgetting, sorry, one of the mm -hmm. places up north in one of the territories. And it was just, it's not, that, it's not that it was casual, but it was just so common, the conversations about, oh, my secretary is off because her son committed suicide. Right. Or and this person actually okay. committed suicide. And it's just, and I thought, I don't read about this on a daily basis, about what's going no, on. But so it's difficult there's, there's for us to go back to the bus driver who gets laced on the bus and can't work and has yeah. to it's, have it's, mental counseling yeah. and all of that and say there's an excuse for that. Yeah. It's 
difficult. No, it, it's very, very difficult. And that's why I say mm -hmm. if we want less of those things, those difficulties, right. then we have to be more active. And that means, by the way, that means voting consciously. I mean, I know we only get one vote when you're voting provincially and federally. That's it. That's all you mm -hmm. get. It's not like the American system where you can vote for a bunch right. of different people. Municipal, you get a little more, but they don't have that authority. But so vote consciously on who is actually looking after human rights. Also looking after the economy. But right. if, you, you know, if, sure. if, if it's something that we, we want to have important to us, then we've got to make sure that we're voting for Absolutely. politicians who say human rights are important. And we ask the questions at the meetings. Yes, Before and, you and, vote, and, 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 bring and, it up. And, and not only that, then you go to the nominating meeting, you decide what party you belong mm -hmm. to, you go to the nominating meeting, and you support the people who you want to have as the candidates. Absolutely. So that you can't just later on throw up your hands and say, oh, I don't like any of them. Well, did you do anything to actually go and try to help <laughs> out that decision? I know. How nice to see you. Good to this see This topic Fanny. could be discussed for like two hours. Well, you of know course. that. Yes, but yes. We, got, we did pretty well in 10 <laughs> minutes. We did very well. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Stephen Hammond, uh, Steps in the Right Direction, one of his books, uh, Managing Human Rights at Work, too. Uh, Shaw wants to remind you the 2012 Fill the Food Banks campaign is currently underway. For more information, visit togetherisamazing.com. Remember, you can catch all of our conversations on YouTube or follow us on Twitter at Fanny Kiefer.